Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center today, and we're going to talk about a really cool venomous snake. And no, it's not actually my King Cobra that I have behind me. We're going to talk about a different type of venomous snake. This isn't a lapid. We're going to talk about a viper uh, today. We're going to talk about a venomous pit viper. All right, now, before we get into that, right here, right there is the subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. And for those that have, we appreciate it. And now let's get right into the timber rattlesnake. The timber rattlesnake, also known as the Crotalus horridus, absolutely amazing, amazing, very, very beautiful snake found all over the southeastern United States. Now, one of the cool things about these guys is that they are and tend to be one of the larger of the viper species that we have in the United States. Now we have one in the zoo here and she's on exhibit. Awesome, beautiful animal. She's about six and a half feet, between six and six and a half feet. So let's go take a look at her and let's talk about this beautiful timber rattlesnake. Come on. Okay guys, so check this out. This right here, absolutely beautiful. This is one of our exhibits inside of the zoo. This is our timber rattlesnake, also known as the Crotalus horridus. Absolutely awesome, beautiful, beautiful species of venomous pit viper or rattlesnake in the United States. It's one of the larger bodied rattlesnakes we have in the U.S. Uh, these guys are found all over the uh, southeastern United States. Uh, matter of fact, it's the most widely distributed rattlesnake or venomous snake that we have in the United States, only second to the prairie rattlesnake, which is more populated throughout the United States uh, than the timber rattlesnake. Uh, but these two, the prairie rattlesnake and the timber rattlesnake are the two most populated, uh, meaning they hit the most amount of states and the most amount of territory inside of the United States. Now, absolutely awesome animals. Uh, one of the cool things about these guys uh, that I want to make crystal clear is they do uh, they do tend to have color variances depending on their elevation, okay? So understand this, with a lot of your species, uh, and that includes the cottonmouth uh, and uh, even your uh, coral snakes, uh, even your uh, western diamondbacks, and a lot of your species, the lower in elevation they go or more towards the equator, towards hotter climates, the lighter they are. The higher in elevation they go, or uh, the higher up in mountains or colder in elevation away from the equator, the darker they get. The reason for this is so that they can warm up um, or uh, cool down uh, and not get too hot, either faster or not as fast. Think about being in Florida. Uh, you don't need a black rattlesnake in Florida because it stays hot pretty much all the time. Uh, even in the winter time, they'll still have days where it still gets up into the 70s, mid 70s, even the low 80s. Uh, it may get down in the 40s and 50s at night time, uh, but still that's much, much different than going up to Kentucky or West Virginia where they're lucky if for only about three or four months out of the year, it hits the upper 80s, maybe the low 90s. Uh, the rest of the time, it's actually getting quite cool. So these these guys have to be able to draw in the sunlight uh, during the winter time just a little bit faster than what their uh, counterparts in, of course, Florida or lower Georgia, South Carolina, Mississippi uh, would have to do. Okay, now. Of course, these are uh, pit vipers, which means as you can see right there, you see the nostril holes right on the top and then right beside it, the actual pits uh, right in front of the eye, those are the heat sensing pits. Now these guys will have independent moving fangs, meaning they can independently move their fangs and they're like switch blades, so they actually fold back into the roof of the mouth because the fangs are so long. They don't have uh, divots or pits inside of the jawline for their fangs to go into. Uh, a little bit similar to uh, your elapids or colubrids where they're short fanged and fixed, uh, but they uh, do have kind of a spot where those fangs can just sit right down in there without actually puncturing their lower jaw. These guys do not have that and do actually fold those fangs back into the mouth. Now, these guys will get up to six, six and a half feet. This big girl right here, she's about six feet, two inches. Uh, she's probably about as big around in the middle as uh, close to a little bit bigger than a tennis ball. Uh, so this is a big, big timber that we have on exhibit. Absolutely awesome girl, fairly laid back. As a, as a general rule of thumb, this species is not terribly laid back all the time. They can be a little bit more testy. Uh, of course, they have the telltale rattle. 
They have the telltale rattle, which is, uh, of course, their warning. That's their defense. All rattlesnakes will have the rattle. Uh, some are longer than others. Some rattles are longer than others, and I do want to put a myth to bed, okay? Let me see if I can get, uh, oh, she's seen the hook coming. Let's see if I can get this beautiful girl to stick her tail up. Well, there's a strike. <laughs> Let's see if I can get her to stick that tail up there. Right there. There we go. There's the rattle. All right. <clears throat> as big as she is, most people would think, oh man, she can't be all that old. Well, here's the thing. One of the myths about rattlesnakes is people say that you can tell their age by the amount of buttons they have on their rattle. Now, if you understand, you see each one of those knobs is considered a button. All right. Now, that's actually false, okay? Understand this. You cannot tell the age of a snake by its rattles uh, because every time a rattlesnake sheds, they grow a new button on the end of their rattle. So their rattle expands or extends, I guess I should say extends, every time they shed. So the more these animals eat, the more they're going to shed. The more they shed, the bigger they get, of course, and the bigger they get, and the more they shed, the more uh, buttons they're going to have on their rattle. Now, in the wild, is it kind of possible to get a sense of as long as the rattlesnake has not lost any of its rattles uh, ever before, is it possible to get kind of a rough sense of how old the snake may be? Yeah, it's possible. Because in the wild, not everywhere is plentiful with food. So they may only eat two or three times uh, in a season um, from being out of brumation. And of course, that's only going to put them into one, maybe two sheds. Uh, so it's it's possible to come close, but there's no, uh, it's not a guaranteed thing. And it's no, definitely no way to tell the age of a snake uh, is just by the amount of rattles that it has. Uh, she has had as many as 21 rattles on uh, on her, or 21 buttons on her rattle before. Uh, and of course, they are hard, they're brittle. It's kind of like keratin, it's kind of like your hair or your fingernails. There is nothing inside of the rattles, uh, which makes it even cooler because yes, it does sound like a maraca, but no, uh, there is absolutely nothing, no sand, no pebbles, no uh, BBs, no nothing inside of that rattle. It's just so hard and dry that as they shake it, it makes the rattling sound, which is absolutely, absolutely awesome. These are some of the prettiest uh, of the rattlesnake species because they have a wide range of color. Uh, they're also known as the cane breaks, um, which is a uh, uh, which is another uh, another phrase or another terminology for uh, the timber rattlesnake. I know there is no difference between the two. Some some people will argue that the cane break and the timber is different. There is no difference. It's kind of like people arguing the cottonmouth and the water moccasin. It's the exact same snake. You're meaning the same thing. Uh, and these are absolutely awesome animals. Amazing, amazing, uh, amazing rattlesnakes. Uh, they tend to hang out in a lot of your rocky burrows, a lot of leaf litter. You can kind of see how they would blend in in the forested areas. Uh, their diet is going to be anything from bugs as babies. Uh, they'll eat things like uh, cicadas and katydids, uh, worms, slugs. Uh, to, as they get older, they'll eat, of course, rodents and birds. Uh, they'll eat baby rabbits, um, stuff like that. So they have been known to even cannibalize one another, but it doesn't tend to happen that often. That's kind of a rarity. Now, with the venomous snakes, uh, they do have a pretty toxic bite. Uh, these guys are used in a lot of your uh, snake handling churches uh, and uh, in uh, a lot of those uh, processes, but understand that half the time they're they're either chilled or cooled down uh, so that they don't strike, or uh, they're so malnourished. And uh, a lot of your wild caught species don't do good in captivity, uh, so they're so stressed out and uh, and sickly uh, that a lot of the times they're not able to bite. You can kind of see that, and and if if it's a full looking, thick looking snake, then it's pretty healthy. It's doing pretty well. It's able to hold its body up. Uh, if you don't, uh, and it's uh, looking kind of skinny and it's kind of flopping around all over the place. It's not a very healthy snake. Um, but uh, these guys are responsible uh, for quite a few deaths in the uh, in those communities uh, due to this is one of the ones that they will handle uh, inside of those. Now, uh, this is a uh, type of uh, viper species uh, from the United States, and it will take uh, Crofab as, uh, as the anti-venom uh, readily available throughout the United States uh, anymore. Uh, very few deaths actually happen from most of your venomous snakes anymore, unless it's just somebody that was way out deep in the woods uh, hiking or hunting, uh, or somebody way out in the middle of the desert that got hit by one of the Midwestern species, um, and they were just so far from help that by the time they got to help, uh, it was just too late. Uh, but uh, deaths are really rare anymore, thankfully. Uh, 
due to the readily available uh, anti-venom, and it's a universal anti-venom for everything in the United States other than the Gila monster and the coral snake. Um, so the timber rattlesnake, the western, the eastern, the pygmies, the uh, the uh, um, the black tails and the spectacles or speckles, uh, and just so on and so forth. All of those are uh, are just all treated by the same type of uh, uh, same type of antivenom. Um, now, you can see here one of the myths that we try and put to bed a lot of the times. Yes, this girl does have kind of the cat eyes and the triangular shaped head, but I want you to understand that myth does not fly for a lot of things, um, especially throughout the world. A lot of your venomous snakes have straight um, heads and they have round eyes. Uh, the only time that that would really apply would be in the United States, and even that's not a real good thing because the coral snake has a straight head and the, uh, and the round eyes. Um, of course, when you start talking exotic, Boa constrictors have a triangular shaped head and cat, uh, cat eyes, uh, and they're constrictors. All right, so kind of take that rule of thumb. The easiest thing that we tell folks is know what your species looks like. There's five venomous species in North Carolina, uh, about the same thing in several of your other states along the eastern seaboard, uh, South Carolina, as well as Georgia. Uh, uh, Florida has one or two additional species, but, uh, but with this, the, know the species, uh, know exactly which ones are venomous and which ones are not, and then it does not matter which other ones are not venomous because everything else is pretty much going to be harmless uh, when it comes to your native species. But if you know the ones that can be dangerous, uh, then it doesn't matter which ones are not dangerous when it comes to identification. Now, this has been the timber rattlesnake. This is an awesome, awesome, very, it can be a very dangerous animal, but, but very, very beautiful, uh, beautiful venomous snake, venomous viper that we have, um, not only in our state, but all across, uh, all across the southeastern United States. All right, now wasn't she absolutely beautiful? This is one of the coolest things that I think we get to mess with that's native inside of, inside of our state, inside of North Carolina. I love the coral snakes, I'm my absolute all-time favorite. Second would be the Eastern Diamondback. They're just massive, massive animals. They do get quite a bit bigger than what the timber rattlesnakes do, but those timbers right there are some kind of stunning, beautiful, very big, big, big vipers that we have here in the United States. Now, we appreciate you following along and we appreciate you watching week after week after week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell, hit that uh, like button, and feel free to write us in. Let us know of different things that you want us to film about. People's doing it all the time, and we appreciate them doing so. And we're enjoying, absolutely enjoying, trying to get all this education that we can into your homes and into the homes of others. Now, again, we appreciate you coming along here with the zoo. I'm Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers. This is the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We'll either see you on the next episode or we'll see you here at the zoo. Later.